Hello friends, welcome to First Studies YouTube channel. This is part 45 in Azure Data Factory Real Time Scenarios playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss how we can iterate over Excel file sheets dynamically and copy each sheet as a CSV file. So, this is what the requirement. So, let me explain you about the requirement first. Let me go to my desktop. On my desktop, I have a demo.xls file. Let me double click this demo file and show you the content inside this excel file so this file contains two sheets sheet one contain one header row the column names are column one column two column three and two rows are there and if you see the sheet two we have one header row and we have two rows here also but totally four columns here okay so in data factory right now right there is no way where you can know the sheet names dynamically so right now here my first sheet name is sheet 1 my second sheet name is sheet 2 it can be anything in in your case uh, or in real time there may be a sheet called a b c d or okay and then there may be a sheet called x y z it can be anything okay so is there a way to know what is the each sheet name inside a excel file or is there a way like how many excel sheets we have inside a excel file then the answer is no there is no direct way of knowing that at this moment so usually what we have to do in that case is you need to keep this so for example your requirement is you need to iterate over this excel sheets dynamically that means uh, first you have to read this abcd sheet and copy this data into one csv file and then read this xyz sheet and copy this data into another csv file so let's assume that is what your requirement so usually what you will be thinking you will be thinking of uh, having this uh, sheet names dynamically right but there is no direct way to know the sheet names or how many sheets you have that also you cannot know directly in the data factory so either you need to keep these sheet names in a sql table and then get the sheet names there and dynamically loop that sheet names and then perform the copy of each sheet you have to do that one or another way is uh, uh, maybe you will be writing some other process maybe some python code or maybe implementing some azure function or maybe writing one databricks notebook that will read the sheet names dynamically and give it to you in the data factory and from there you dynamically loop them so that is the only way right now but there is one small trick way also where even though you don't know the sheet names you can copy each sheet so how to copy that each sheet i will tell you now so we will be using the sheet indexes in the excel file right the first sheet index will be index 0 and the second sheet index will be index 1. I will be using that and I will be looping through each sheet until we get a failure. For example, for this excel file, if the sheet index is 2, then 0, 1, there is no another sheet, right? So, it will fail there. So, I will use that approach as a trick to copy each sheet into my CSV files as a separate separate CSV files. Let me show you that. Let me go to data factory here and let me go to author menu here here let's try to create a new data set first for my excel so i my excel file is not there in my storage so let me go to azure portal and here let me go to this adls mahir container sorry this is a storage account name right so let's go to containers here and sample container inside a sample container maybe under data folder let's try to copy that file so let me hit this upload button uh, okay let me do one thing let me save this uh, excel which is there in my local let me close that and here let me click this browse button and on my desktop there is a folder called mahir work inside that folder sample files so this is where i have that excel file so let me open that file and let me hit upload button so my file is available in the data lake storage gen2 under sample container data folder now i am trying to create a new data set right so this data set should be connecting to gen2 so let's use that gen2 connector here and it is a excel file continue uh, so this is like a demo excel file okay this is the name of my data set which i am giving it here and uh, i am selecting a linker service and uh, if i open this linker service it is actually pointing to ADLS Mahir storage account only. 
so i can click this test connection to make sure the connection is successful and here let's browse for the file under sample container i have a data folder under data folder there is a demo.xl file so let me select this file here so this is where so we can use the sheet names or we can use the index when you use the sheet names sheet names will be loaded here and you can select the appropriate sheet so if i select abcd sheet that means it is going to point to only that sheet and if i select xyz sheet then that means it is going to point to only that sheet and if i use indexes then it will give two indexes like zero index is abcd sheet index one is xyz sheet but i don't want this to be hard coded right why because my requirement is it can be any number of sheets in the real time so i should be able to loop through or iterate over each sheet and copy that sheet content as a csv file so we need to have this as a dynamic so let me do one thing so let me select first row as a header for now and let's not import any schema here and simply click ok to create a data set first and once the data set created here what i will be doing is i will be using the worksheet mode as an index why because my idea is i will pass the numbers 0 index 1 index 2 index like that dynamically and i will try to copy them for example for the 0 index the copy will work for the 1 index the copy will work for the index 2 copy will fail so that's where i will come out of the loop and then i will complete my execution so that is my trick so to do that this index i am clicking this edit button to make this as a dynamic so for that under parameter sections of the data offset let's create a new parameter and uh, let's say like this is sheet index maybe okay sheet index so this is the name of the parameter and let's use an integer number for it i mean integer type okay so let's go back to connection now here for the sheet index let me hit add dynamic content and let me select this sheet index so into this sheet index whatever the index i pass that index sheet will be copied so data set is clear now now let's try to create a new pipeline in this new pipeline uh, let me name this pipeline like maybe i trade excel file okay sorry i trade excel file sheets this is what the name of the pipeline i am giving and here in the pipeline inside this pipeline let's try to create a some variables i why i am creating these variables you will make a sense of it so i will create a variable called maybe counter and if you see these variables can contain only these three types string type boolean type array type so let it be string type and i am passing zero zero as a value into the counter so this counter value i will supply into my data set and uh, the counter will be zero that means index will be zero so zero sheet will be copied then i have to increase the counter to one then index will be supplied as a one inside a loop and the first sheet will be i mean the second sheet will be copied then the counter will increase to two then the two will be supplied here then at, it, at two index we don't have any sheet in my excel file so it will fail there so that's where whenever if the failure happens i will come out of the loop so this kind of looping you can do using a until activity if you've seen my previous videos from the data factory playlist you know that so until activity perform the loops until some until some condition met so i will use that failure condition there once the failure condition met then come out of the loop so that means i copied all the cop, uh, sheets there so to to know that if there is a failure or not to create another variable inside this para variables so is error and this one let's try to use it as a boolean type okay and i have to increase this counter right for that let me do one thing let me create something called temp counter variable and this temp counter value will be incremented by one and that will be assigned into this counter parameter so when i implement that you will make sense of it so let me do one thing here now as i said let's use a until activity to perform the loops and then inside until activity what i should be doing is in the until activity as i said before i should be using that copy activity and everything to loop so let's go inside until activity so right now i am inside until activity and here what i should do firstly let's use a set variable activity and if you remember in my pipeline under variables 
I created a counter and I set a value default as a 0. So now what I will do? I will take this 0 value of the counter and increment that by 1 and store it that into a temp counter. Then I perform a copy activity. Then after copy activity, I will take back this counter value back into the counter variable. So that right, it will make sense of looping through each and every every sheet. So when I implement that, it will make sense of it. Let me go inside. So first, let's try to use a set variable activity and let's select set temp, temp counter. Okay. And let me go to variables and here let me select my temp counter variable and the, all these types are like string types, right? Okay. You, you need to remember that. So let me click this add dynamic. The variables are string type. Only is error variable is the boolean type which I selected. And here what I will be doing, if you see under functions, there is something called add function that will help you to add two numbers. And if I scroll down, see this add will return addition of the two numbers. You can see the tool tips. And the both the numbers should be integers. So let's use this add function. And inside this add function, let's use our counter. Counter will be containing by default 0 as a value, right? So let's use our counter and then supply 1. So here it will be 0, then 1. 0 plus 1, 1 will be stored inside the temp counter variable. But there is an error. Why? Because this counter variable is a string type and we should supply value as an integer. So there is a function called int. Uh, if you go to functions and if you search for int, that will help you to, con to convert the data type the value to an integer number. So if you see int of, if you observe the tooltip at the last, int of single quotes 10, uh, sorry, single quotes 100 will give you a integer number 100. So what I will be doing, I will be using this int function here and inside the int function, I will be passing my variable. Okay. So now this entire thing is going to give 0, 1 addition, 1 will be written and that one number is integer. But this variable is a string type, right? So that's the reason it is complying int does not match with the value of the expected variable type. So here let's try to convert this back to string. Thus there is a string function. So that string function will convert whatever you pass into a string string type. So this is fine. Now, now once the loop starts, counter will be having a value 0. Uh, sorry, counter will be having a value 0, but a temp counter will be having a value 1 here. So after that. Let's try to use a copy activity and then let's connect this. So once the counter value is incremented by 1 in comparison with the counter. So this is a temp counter variable, right? So temp counter value incremented by 1 in comparison with the counter variable. Then I am performing a copy activity and then if I inside a copy activity, let's go to source and here let me select the data set which we created for a Excel and here we have a sheet number dynamically. So here, click this add dynamic content and I will be passing my counter variable here and I should convert this to int type. Why? Because the parameter type inside a data set is a int, right? This index parameter type is int. So convert that to int. Now what is happening? So at this moment in the first iteration, temp counter value became 1 because counter comma 1. So counter plus 1, it will become 1. Then here in the copy activity counter I am passing that means I am passing 0 index that means first sheet will be copied and after that I will be using another set variable activity and here in this set variable activity I will be setting a value for a counter and here let's let's go here let's select the counter variable so right now counter is having 0 now I am assigning this temp counter value into the counter variable. So let's click this add dynamic content variables, select this temp counter. So now if you closely observe, so in the first iteration here, the counter variable, so let me do one thing. So let me explain this in, in, in two seconds by using some tool. So that way you will make sense of it, what we are doing inside a loop. So let me open this gmit, let me click OK. And now if you closely observe, here what I am doing it here is so initially when pipeline starts counter value is 0 okay and then in the first loop so in the first loop what will happen here temp counter will become 1 why because 0 plus 1 okay then copy in the copy activity I am supplying counter 
that means zero index sheet will be copied okay then here i am assigning inside this counter variable i am assigning this temp counter so that means counter will be becoming one and the second loop start so in the second loop this temp temp counter value will become two why because counter value has a one plus one will become two and here in the copy activity i will be supplying this counter variable value that is one that means first sheet will be copied and then here what will happen inside a counter variable i am assigning the temp counter that means this time two will come and then third iteration will start in the third iteration this temp this counter will become three and here counter two will be passed and uh, at that two index we don't have any sheet so it will fail here and once it fails this is where on failure here we should initialize that is error parameter variable whatever i created so that is error variable value i will be setting to true here okay so let's try to do that so here what i will be doing it here is so let's use set variable once again if this copy activity fails that means the index is out of range that means at that index we don't have any sheet so here set is error and is error variable type is boolean so what i will be doing it here let me go here and let me select is error and here let's assign a value and if i go to functions here there is a function called bool that will convert any value to bool so if you if you use if you if you closely observe here bool of 0 will be see bool of 0 will be returning you false bool of 1 will be returning you true so what i will be doing it so if there is error happened right so since there is an error what i should be doing in the is error add dynamic content i will be using at the rate bool and uh, so error happened right so one i will be passing so it will become true so this is error variable value will become true now let's come back to our loop and here in the until activity under settings i need to use an expression that should return true or false if the expression returns true then the loop will end so here i will be using this is error variable okay so is error value on failure of the loop on failure of the copy activity will become true and the loop will exit there so let's go back to pipeline the default value for the is error if you want to set it as false then you can set it as a false as well so up to you okay so it's up to fine it is fine if you don't define also so now here everything is fine uh, if now if i go inside a copy activity i did a small mistake so in a copy activity source i have selected but sync i have not selected so let me select a sync uh, to a output folder maybe and if i open this data set it is pointing to a sample container output folder uh, let's not use this now uh, let's try to create a new data set because we are going to create a file name of the csv dynamically so let's use that let's use a delimited text and this is like a output folder file something like that and let's select our linked service first row is header and let's browse the location to sample container then maybe output folder and uh, let's click ok here so let's not select any file let's not import any schema as well let me click ok so output folder file data set created let me open this data set and here i want the file name to be dynamically so each file will be copied right i mean each sheet will be copied from my excel right so that that sheet file name should be dynamic so let me do one thing so let's create a parameter here called file name let's go to connections let's add dynamic content let me use this file name parameter here let's go back to pipeline and here for this file name parameter with which the file will be created let me click add dynamic content so i want my file names to be like a demo excel sheet then sheet 0.csv or sheet 1.csv like that so this 0 or 1 will be i am getting it from my counter variable right so let's use this counter variable here so under variables we have something called counter variable dot csv so this is what the file i want to be so let me click ok now everything is set and uh, this time if i go here and if i see the implementation so counter variable i have defined zero at the starting 
when I created a pipeline here you can see and then inside a loop what I am doing I am setting the counter temp counter to incrementing and copy activity with the help of counter for the sheet and then we will be increasing the counter value variable using this temp counter and once all the sheets copied on error we are setting the is error variable value and that is error variable I am using it as a condition for until activity so that's it so now let me uh, publish this all changes and then let me run this and see what will happen whether it will actually work it or not so you can see right now publish is in progress after publish only you can trigger any pipeline but you can use this debug execution before publish also to run it but why i am trying to publish and trigger i will explain you that we need to do a small change here actually still so let me trigger now here and let me click ok and once the pipeline run triggered you can go to monitor tab and then here you can monitor the executions now you can see let's refresh is here so pipeline is running and if i go inside the execution you can clearly see that until activity is running and if you see until started counter value set to 1 and copy activity done then counter value set to 1 this is temp counter set to 1 first then counter set to 1 then the second loop will start for the sheet 2 and you can see here the counter value set to 3 this time why because this is a uh, third loop and this time it will fail so one second so let's wait see once the copy activity fails this is error value value set to true and that's it the pipeline execution might have come out and if you see the error it says like uh, there is no content at the sheet out of range index so everything looks good and if i go back to monitor tab and if I go back to pipeline runs, let me go back to pipeline runs. So you can see, let me refresh the status of this pipeline execution. You can see the status is failed. And uh, but uh, if I go here, and if I go to sample container, and if I go to output folder, I got both the CSV files. Okay. And if I open every CSV file, I will be having a data as well. So if I go to CSV file, see here I got the data correctly only. And then if I go to another CSV file, even here also I will be getting a data correctly only. But the only problem here what we have seen is everything is works fine but the pipeline status shows as a failure. Why? Because if you closely observe your pipeline is failing, the until activity is failing inside this copy activity, right? So the entire until activity status will be marked as a fail and there is no other activity after the failure activity. So that's the reason your pipeline status also will show as a failure. So I don't want the pipeline status to be shown as a failure. I want it to be shown as a successful. So for that what you do, you use a simple some dummy activity like wait activity maybe. And to this wait activity, on failure of the until activity, execute this wait activity. So this wait activity will run once the until activity fails. The until activity will fail once the sheet index crosses the range and this activity will success automatically since the last activity execution in the flow is successful so you see your pipeline status is also successful let me publish these changes and show you practically so let me publish these changes so publish is in progress once it published i can trigger my pipeline so let's wait for the publish to complete here so publish completed now if i trigger this pipeline by clicking the OK button, it should publish, it should it should show the pipeline status also as a successful. So let's wait here. See your pi here pipeline execution started. And if I go inside a pipeline execution, I will be seeing the until activity execution. Let me refresh this. It will take couple of seconds to complete the execution, right? So two sheets has to be copied and the third sheet it will fail why because there is no sheet available at index 3 so now it should fail the copy activity let me hit this refresh button multiple times to view the status of the execution you can see right now copy activity is in queued okay now copy activity failed and now the execution will come to wait activity if i refresh this 
see wait activity is successful until is failed now if i go back to pipeline branch i will be seeing my pipeline status also as a successful only why because the last activity in the flow was executed successful so that's it in this video i hope now you understood how we can perform the copy activity of i mean how we can perform the iteration over the excel file sheets dynamically using that sheet index and copy them to your desired locations so here we know we are not hard coding the sheet names or sheet indexes anywhere or we are not using some other process like azure function or databricks to get the sheet names dynamically so this dynamic approach with the adf itself you can use to copy the sheets dynamically from excel file to sync location thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever i add videos thank you so much